Hey friend, are you a mama who wants to stop just getting by? Maybe you're motivated to grow yourself in your motherhood, your marriage, and you want it to bear fruit. Or maybe you just want to stop letting the mom guilt, shame, and limiting beliefs and lies and start stepping into the woman and the truth that God has created you to be. While we're juggling all the things, nursing a baby, battling laundry, trying to keep it together and a spicy marriage, but where do we start? What's up, sister? I'm Ashley Carroll, the host of the Social Girls Podcast, and I'm here to hold your hand through this journey because I believe when you're ready to take control of your life, beat the limiting excuses, and step into the woman God created you to be, you can not only survive, but you can thrive but you're gonna have to show up for yourself. It's time for me to tough love your way through taking self-care seriously, investing and growing in your marriage, owning your motherhood, and getting rid of excuses because the glory is in the journey. It's in the mess. In this podcast, you'll find navigating mom guilt, mindset and marriage strategies, and everything in between with no fluff and lots of fun. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome to the Social Girls Podcast. If you're new here, I do a segment with a group of women called Moms in the Middle Talk, and we get together and talk about lots of different topics ranging from motherhood, marriage, sex, intimacy, uh, faith. I mean, you name it, nothing is off the table. And so today is another one of those episodes where we are talking about... S-E-X. So if you have little ears present, use this moment to pause, choose another episode, listen, put your, you know, quietly put your earbuds in, whatever it is you need to do to make sure your little ones can't hear because this is not appropriate. But today we are talking about intimacy and sex and making time for it and how do you manage it and what if, like, it's, it's just a really good conversation to be a fly on the wall for six different women to talk about their struggles, what they're dealing with, different points of view, different perspectives, how to overcome, how to pursue your spouse. And it's just such a refreshing way to talk about it. So without further ado, let's get into it. To set the stage a little bit for you, each of us takes a turn bringing a topic to the table and then hosting, quote unquote. So they are the ones leading the conversation. Just wanted to mention that so you're not confused when somebody else starts the conversation and you hear their voice and you hear just me chiming in every once in a while. This is not the week that I hosted. This is just me commenting and sharing my point of view, which there are some amazing nuggets in there. So you're going to want to listen in. Do not skip this episode. Let's go. So I'm going to just give everyone here an opportunity to just say what they do, who they are and what they do, because y'all are going to introduce yourselves a heck of a lot better than me. So, and you guys can tell, like, I've been talking to Michelle today because I'm picking up on the y'all a lot. I feel like, I feel like I'm just picking up on her ass. <laughs> Sorry. Yay. Sorry, I love it. We're well, ready I'll for go- you in the South. Yes. I I'm just Michelle, love y'all. You go first. <laughs> All right. So I'm Michelle Porterfield and I am host of the Set Free Sisterhood podcast. And um, I also have a Facebook group and I help women get unstuck from the daily cycle of drinking, self-sabotage, shame and guilt so that they can be set free and create a life of fulfillment. And I love it. Yes. Amazing. Kristen, tell us about yourself, girl. I am Kristen Chadwick. I am the host of Holistic Hearts podcast. It's a transformational Christian spiritual journey podcast all about mind, body, spirit. Um, I'm just passionate about bringing others along to come and taste and see that um, he really is that good. Awesome. Awesome. Ryan. Hey everyone. I'm Ryan channel and I'm the host of the wellness and the word podcast and really focused on meditating on God's word, just the, the power behind God's word helping women become mentally and emotionally well through the word and um, just love to be in the Bible and share that with others, the revelations that I learned from God and um, just really encourage women to seek and know God for themselves. Okay. Hey guys, I'll just say it in the comments if you can't hear me because I'm constantly freezing, but I'm Ashley Carroll. I'm the host of the So She Grows podcast. Um, and my expertise in my area for mamas is to help them to kick the negative self-talk, the limiting beliefs. Um, I call myself the height, your hype mom bestie. I love to empower mamas in life and getting back to you in marriage and in their mindset. And so 
yeah, I just like to tough love the heck out of you and also um, help you get back to being the best version of yourself possible. So awesome. So it's very amazing. awesome. We were missing. <laughs> and actually, Michelle, let me know that I'm still getting some feedback. So I don't know how to have the Facebook going this recording. And then I are have you are you muted over there? Mm. I'm muted. Can I can I just press pause on it? Will that affect like the actual live on the Facebook? Well, why don't you just let up? We can keep an eye on the comments about that if that helps. Okay, so, so you I can just close it out. I don't need it. I don't even need this open. Is what you're saying? Yeah, no, you don't need okay. Facebook open. Sweet. You're already streaming live, so you're good. Okay. Okay, I close that. <laughs> oh, Ashley, Ashley left and came back. All right, guys, this is this is technology at its best right here. And the whole reason we started this to begin with, I think we have two of Ashley now is <laughs> maybe it's Ashley that's giving feedback on there. Yeah, oh, I was having trouble. I, okay, wait, can you hear me now? So I was having trouble using my phone. And so I was like, okay, maybe if I hop on my, like, okay, maybe if I hop on my lap, but is this still happening? I think it's me y'all. Yeah. No, you're good. Well, your, your other thing's gone now. So I had to remove just... your other. So okay. we started this whole group, you guys, because we are all very much aligned in the fact that <laughs> we need to be real in this <laughs> online space. Cause this oh is what people God. need to see. Um, and we call ourselves moms in the middle because we are in the middle of it all. So running businesses, wifing, taking care of kids, all the things. So, so excited to have you guys joining us here and, um, let's talk, let's just dive in sex. Right. So one thing I kind of want to lead off the conversation with is, um, and we had kind of even preemptively discussed this is having equal sex drives or being like equally matched with your partner sexually. And, um, I honestly, I honestly am just thinking, I'm like, I don't think I have ever like really talked to anybody who just felt like, yep, naturally we are just like on the same page. We want it just about the same amount. We're like good. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, does that exist? <laughs> I don't know. So that's why this is such a good thing to start like the group with. Does any, any of you guys feel just totally aligned with your husbands sexually? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I think that we do, or right currently my husband and I do, but it took like good. a lot of, a lot of work, um, a lot of communication, awkward conversations, um, a lot of self-work dealing with, you know, what were my roadblocks and also, um, a lot of mindset work about, sex in general, what it actually is, what it means, expectations, like all the things that you bring into it that make it difficult to be intimate because, you know, of things that we've been surrounded by past relationships, yada, yada. I mean, we could go on and on all about that stuff, but you know, so it is possible. Um, yeah. and then when, and then when you do align, it is, it is so amazing. <laughs> I don't know how to, um, so it, and it's totally worth the work. I, I thank you for shedding light on that. So yes, like as far as aligning, it is absolutely possible. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a naturally occurring thing, like yeah. to, to hit on what yeah. Ashley's saying. Right. It's like, it, first, I think the expectation is like, we're just going to naturally mm -hmm. want it the same amount. Right. We should just, it should just be a natural thing in marriage that he wants it just as much as I want it, or I want it just as much as him. And we should just click right? Like I've even heard people say that, like the whole, like waiting until you're married to have sex sounds absolutely ludicrous. Cause how do you know if you're going to connect? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like that right there, even that is like, that's such a mindset in and of itself. Right. Mm -hmm. If you even take that element out, it's like, you're expecting it to be a natural thing. Whereas mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of work that goes into getting you guys to that point. And the good news is there's lots of stuff you can do yourself right? In order, like you said, Ashley. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll stop talking here. Anyone else want to weigh in on that? Well, the first thing that I kind of thought of was it's just like any other season. You know, I believe that we are going to have those ebbs and flows where like there are seasons 
where as the, you know, as a wife, we may have a higher quote unquote sex drive and the men might, and it has to do with age hormones, you know, children, children's ages. So I think then it would go back for me to what you were saying, Katie was it's all about the connection. Mm -hmm. So when, when we are in those seasons, are we truly connecting in a way that does satisfy each other? Mm. Yeah, I completely agree that what I've learned is figuring out how to, how to feel connected. And Katie, I know you've heard me say this a bunch on my um, IG profile, because I love talking about this topic. Um, is that, you know, like, for women to be intimate, we need to feel connected. And for men to feel connected, they need to be intimate. And so I think we have to, once we can wrap our minds around that and then have a conversation of, okay, what is it that I need to feel connected to my spouse? Um, and then verbalizing that to them, then it makes it easier because I mean, like, like for an instance, now I live in RV, I have zero, hardly any privacy, um, we're building this barn, you know, behind us. I have a toddler, I have a seven year old or an eight year old and 11 year old and life is just crazy right now. And I can tell you honestly that in this season, despite all this going on, we've had the best intimate intimacy relationship that we've ever had right now. And I think it's because we've been, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, how that's happening, but um, it's because, you know, at the end of the day, I can be like, Hey, you know, I need to feel connected to you. So that's me telling him, Hey, I need to spend one-on-one -on -one time with you. I need you to be off your phone. I need you to sit with me. I need you to like, tell me about your day, even though it seems mindless to you. Like that's how I connect is by you inviting me into your world, your day while you were at work all day. Cause you know, I'm at home with the kids and then, um, you know, and then I can feel that can fill my cup to be connected to him. And maybe it's date nights and stuff like that as well. And then once that happens that it becomes more easily, you know, available, that intimate moment, you know, because I'm already feeling connected, but when we've been just passing by in the night and just going, going, and we're not talking, we're not having those connection moments, then I have to tell him like, Hey, like it's not going down because I like, I don't even know. I haven't even talked to you for like, you know, the past day, you can't just come at me at the end of the night and be like, Hey, what's up? You ready? No. <laughs> so <laughs> like, yeah, totally. so I think, I think that was our biggest, um, I think that was our biggest help whatever, like helper in the situation was just knowing what we needed to feel connected and then, um, verbalizing it and being honest and having awkward conversations. And so in the right time, because mm -hmm. usually we're having those conversations where it's like an argument, right? Like I'm not, you're not getting what you want. He's not getting what he wants. And like making mm -hmm. the time to have those conversations. Cause I feel, I think that's probably a big conversation or issue in a lot of marriages like because I've made that clear before too like dude you're basically a stranger today right like I just mm -hmm. I need more time with you like that is I need that connection mm -hmm. and he needs that and it's just like that you're, you're we're never getting through to each other because we're having the conversation at the wrong time mm -hmm. in the heat of the moment so yeah I think it's super important and something else that came up for me was like Michelle you kind of talked about this a little bit like the stages of life that we're in. Cause it's like, we're not early twenties anymore, dude. It's just things have <laughs> different, things are different. Right. And like for guys, they just, I don't think they think of those things because maybe they haven't changed as much for them, but for us as women and hormones and time of the month and having kids, like all of those things play a role. And I think if um, we can help our husbands understand that a little better, that might help. <laughs> I, I think too, one thing I, I want to say is I want to, and I brought this up too a few times is I challenge women in that mindset because I also, it can be a crutch, right? It can mm -hmm. be like, you haven't met my needs yet. Like, oh, we've been strangers all day. Right. But you haven't met my needs yet. And so you don't, you don't get yours. Like somehow our needs are like, have to mm -hmm. be met That's before theirs is right. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, in all, it's like what I'm saying here is like, yes, in an ideal situation, we want to put that effort forward of meeting each other's needs, but it isn't always 50-50. Mm -hmm. And some women and me too, in particular, back in the day would be like, no, dude, you didn't earn this. 
<laughs> like I had that mindset, like you didn't, and no, it was, and that was just my, my mindset. Like mm-hmm. you didn't talk to me, you ignored me. And I was mad about it and frustrated. And I brought that energy. Right. Mm-hmm. And I felt totally entitled to do that versus thinking, oh, maybe he had a really hard day today. And maybe cause guys withdrawal when they do. Mm-hmm. Right. And maybe he does need some sex to unwind and be able to communicate, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's just one thing that I, I know I totally agree. It's when you can like invite him in and say like, Hey, if you do this for me, I'll, I'll get turned on. It'll turn, you know, it'll get me going, but also just to be careful of that. Like, Hey, you haven't met my needs yet. So you don't get yours, you know? Yeah. Not Mm -hmm. using it as like, Uh, yeah, 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 totally. But how much of it is like us not being able to shift from mommy mode to like the woman, the, you know, like the sexy person that we are like the confident, like, I think it's really hard for us. So like, if you have this like communication going of like, you know, love languages, are they being met? Are you communicating? Are you feeling like you're connected? And then like, even if like your well oiled wheel like skips a beat, um, I feel like the other, what, what steps in and continues to block us is that inability to shift from like, you're covered in snot, you're covered in like food, or you've been running errands, you're a taxi, you're making the meals, like, and then you're, and then you're supposed to just be like, okay, like I'm ready, you know, like, and, and so I think that, I think it's hard for us to switch to that switch. Um, and so like, I don't know about you, but I'm just saying, like, I think that that is an obstacle for, for mamas. And, um, I think for me having a transition moment is how I am able to, when my kids lay down, have what I call like a transition moment of like, okay, this happens. and I do it every single night. And then it's like my Mm -hmm. signaling to where mentally it's like, okay, I'm done with that part of the day. Now I'm, I'm just Ashley and I'm just, you know, a wife and, I have a shirt with chili on me right now, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like, um, and so I, you know, I think, I, but I think that that is a huge struggle is to get out of our heads, shut down, mm-hmm. stop thinking about the to-do list. And then, I mean, and then you can go into other things too. Gosh, I feel, I love this topic. I'm just, that's a really go good ahead, idea. Go ahead, actually, I had never heard of that. I love that. Well, I've, it's interesting. Cause I've heard you talk about that on your podcast, Ashley, mm-hmm. and I, and I have, I was like, wow, that's huge. So for me, even I, when you were speaking earlier, I feel like there's a lot of women that, you know, we got to back up a little bit and get mm-hmm. to the self-discovery piece of mm-hmm. like, who, who am I anyway? What is connection? How, how, how do I feel connected? Like before we can get to the, the space of like the communication mm-hmm. and the like shifting, well, what if I don't even want to shift yet? Or I'm so wrapped up into this, this mom, even stuckness. I deal with a lot of it with my women I work with. It's like, we're so in reaction mode. And then in this like loop in this cycle of life, like first we have to step back and ask ourselves really exploratory questions, you know, even if we have to go back to the dating phase of, of when we were together, you know, well, what, what is it that drew you to him and what was the attraction and you know when you feel most connected what is happening like Mm -hmm. even the visualization to get to the place where like oh it's when he like sits here and talks to me and looks at me in my eyes you know not when he's over here on the couch on his phone chatting yeah if you guys are all listening write that down like seriously write that question that michelle just said like uh, to some degree of like what is it that makes me like, what is it that turns me on? Like, just Mm -hmm. ask yourself that question because like you're saying, Michelle, so much of this is the beauty of this is that it's actually like stuff we can do within Mm -hmm. instead of like, I hope he turns me on today. Like (laughs) we need to be so freaking clear about Mm -hmm. what turns us on, what makes us feel sexy. Like I love some lingerie. I feel hot in it. Right. Like, he likes it. It's a dual thing. Right. But like, if you guys aren't clear about that, you can't tell him or like, my husband loves to know that stuff. Right. Like, Hey baby, yeah. want to know how you can turn me on? Heck yes. I know. That's what I was going to say. They're going <laughs> to be like, I will book. do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And it's a trial and error thing, right? Like I, I want to, yeah. I always tell people that too, like, don't be embarrassed to try something. Y'all like, totally. I don't, there was like a book that I read or something and it suggested some things. And I was like, oh yeah, that sounds hot. Like, like, let's try that. And then we did it. And I was like, nope, 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 nope. And then, don't. you know, like, I was like, I was like, yeah, don't do it. And then, um, you know, like, or, you know, ways that I want to, you know, be pursued throughout the day or whatever, just trying different things of like, okay, how, you know, what works? And I'm like, yeah, no, like, not really, that really doesn't make me feel that much more connected to you, you know, and, and then being able to be okay with being like, hey, that was weird. I didn't like that, <laughs> you know, or like that, you know, or whatever. Like, I mean, I'm not just talking about like sexual interaction. Sure. It can be like snuggling. It can be yeah. like intimacy is like so big. And um, so, yeah, I think it's okay to be like, to, to search is what I'm saying. Like yeah. I, you're spot on. And, and then, but being able to be like, okay, try something. No, that didn't work. Try something else. Move on, you know? Yeah. And, and never correct in the bedroom, ladies. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Save the feedback for after. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause then you're just bossy. Sorry. I mm -hmm. also a rough lesson learned. Christine, I'm <laughs> quiet over here, but I feel like you have, I feel like you have some stuff to say. Oh man. I feel like I'm learning so much. <laughs> I think, gosh, yeah. I, I would love to go throw it back and say, what if you have a, say you are in the throes of young motherhood. You are in that like spit up on your shirt you have no energy by the end of the day, <laughs> you are, um, tired of being touched. Mm. What is that first initial switch? Like, does it start in your mind in your own journey with yourself? Or would you coach somebody, um, with it's actually communicating with your husband? Like, I'm just thinking if somebody is so far down feeling like they're so far down in the pit of like, I, we can't even talk about sex anymore because it's been months. Like what, how would you coach somebody through that? That's such a good question. Cause so many, so many, including myself, women have felt that right. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's, I mean, obviously the, the first trick is hopefully you don't get to the point of where it's been months. Right. But Sometimes it happens. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're in that, when you're in that mode, right. I think it absolutely does start with you, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so we have to come back to how are you taking care of yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you feel attractive? Do you feel beautiful when you lose sight of who you are as a person, as an individual, and you're just this like frumpy mom covered in spit up, like you don't feel like you're vibrant awesome self that your husband walks in and no, I've got a top knot on my head. I got no makeup on. I got, you know, like, I mean, this, the, the mm -hmm. biggest thing would be like, what is like the first step to make, like taking care of yourself? Like what would be that very next thing you could do? Is it, is it, is it throwing in like a workout? So you start to feel better and have more energy, right? Like mm -hmm. It's different for everybody, but yes, to your point, it's got to start with you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And back to Michelle's like question would be, what turns you on? Mm -hmm. If you can't think about it now, and let's just say sometimes I have women who are stuck in the past. Like I actually had a woman on here say, how can we get sex back to when we were dating, right? And sometimes that's a mindset mm -hmm. like issue in and of itself because you're trying so hard to get back to something you're missing out on something totally new and awesome you could mm -hmm. have yeah right and I can tell you 100% our sex life is so much better now than it was back then and I mean totally but again it started with me being very aware of what my needs were taking care of me mm -hmm. if I don't have the energy right like Ashley's talking about that too. If we don't, if we don't make that mental shift, if we don't take care of ourselves first, like, no, I, I'm just this mom and I'm exhausted. Don't touch me. I don't even want to be around myself, let alone around another person. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I would tell her the same thing along the lines of making a transition trigger. And then like, for me, when things are really crazy and I really do feel like all touched out, it's, what can I do by myself for myself um, really quickly that can help me to just be me, 
that makes me feel good. And so it could be like a lap around the block, like, Hey babe, you're here. I'm going to put on some jams. I'm going to go roll a roller skate around the block, or I'm going to, and that helps me to transition from like this chaos, stress filled, covered. Like I can still be covered in sweat, but the fact that I'm doing something for myself that is making me mentally, physically, and emotionally feel better. And, um, you know, taking a moment, taking the stress off that helps me to, Mm -hmm. okay, like that's my first transition from I'm covered in stuff and y'all have a one and a half year old. So like, that is my life right now. And so like, I'll just, I'll just be like, tag your it, babe. And then like, he knows we've talked about this. Hey, this helps me to be not only a better wife, a better, better version of me. And then later on when we want to connect, I can be there. I can show up as that person because I've had that time to step back from mom mode and like start to transition into wife mode, your partner, your teammate, like, and then, and then, so that is my first transition. And then like later on, after I put the kids to bed, I specifically make myself tea and I have a piece of chocolate and like that habit, because that's something that makes me like, I enjoy that every single night. It's the same thing. It's habitual. doesn't ever change that to me then tr- triggers. Okay. Now you're officially done with the day with your kids, everybody's sleeping. And of course, sometimes somebody wakes up, but for the most part, you know, like now that that mentally helps me say, okay this is, this is the end of like that part of the day is over. This is the new part. And like, enjoy your spouse, enjoy yourself, relax. Like, you know, yeah, that's what I would tell her. Ashley, and not to like butt back in here real quick, but another, just because we were talking about this and you made me think is, Mm -hmm. um, is timing Mm -hmm. like a big part of being with young kids, like the evening time can be just like the worst time to have sex. It like, doesn't have to be in the evening. Yeah, no, I think we, like, yeah, it can be are, in the middle baby, of the day. Like, <laughs> it can be in the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hire, hire, a, hire a sitter, go out to lunch, hit that back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, keep it, keep it yes. exciting. Hire, 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 a, hire mm-hmm. a sitter. We'll have energy, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. back seat. <laughs> I, do, I do agree. <laughs> keep it, keep it yes. exciting. Hire, hire, a, hire a sitter. Who we'll has have it up? Right. Mm-hmm. So, that back seat. <laughs> I okay, okay. Did it stop? <laughs> that was so weird I don't know I <laughs> totally had Facebook closed out so I don't know how that happened but hey so yeah but you know backseat sex got repeated and I thought that was good anyways some of the best I've had so I'm just saying it must have I needed think- it on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a really good point though Katie that you made about um like focusing on what your intimate sea life was yeah. Instead of focusing on now what it can be, because y'all like you change, you become different people. Like it becomes completely different. And I think we w- should want that, right? Like as we get in further to our marriage, we should be um, evolving. We should be getting closer. Our intimate life should be changing for the better. Like, you know, for the most part, like as you are working towards that and working on it, it should be getting better because you're communicating more, you're working on it more. It's not just, you know, I mean, I look back and I'm like, yeah, that was fun. But like, it's not, it's not as deep as it is now. So pick, so pick a time in the day where you have the most energy too. Mm-hmm. And that might be mm-hmm. different. So you can't get mm-hmm. back to dating. This is something new and be open to it. You know, mm-hmm. so sorry, Michelle, go ahead. No, that's okay. Cause I'm just going to step back in and be the advocate for the woman who is just like, okay, this is, this, this is not where I'm at, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. This is not where I'm at. So I want her to explore, you know, asking herself specific questions and this is going to be recorded. So I want to suggest that you really explore what are my secret needs Uh and are they being met right now? And then also even explore a little more of like, when am I the most happy and free? Because these are areas that will help us unlock places within us that come from the embodied experiences we've had or, you know, this, this emotional shutdown that we have or this wall that we may have with our partner that it cannot come from here. It has to come from inside. So in order to get to the place of wanting to be creative, wanting to communicate, we have to really decide like, where are we now? And like, are my needs being met? And then that comes to a whole nother conversation of like, okay, 
well, they're not. And so how can I obviously have them met first with my relationship with the Lord? How can I care for myself? And then what can I ask of my husband? Because I know that he loves me and he wants to support me. Mm -hmm. Those are good. That's really good. Very good. Awesome questions. And sorry, I'm over here, mom and guys. I like how Rosie's That's what this is. (laughs) She's got it muted, but you can see her. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I I completely agree, Michelle. And it's and like that's the point is like I had my husband and I were pretty much always unmatched. Like I just was like, sex is like, uh, okay. Like give or take early years. Like, actually, like I said, sex has been better for us than it was earlier. But that was also because my mindset was like, I hope, like, I feel like it today. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what your base, that's what you are saying too. It's like, we're taking on that responsibility of feeling like it, not giving it all to him. And that's, the biggest thing is like, if we have the ability to be able to get our, like know how our, our needs even need to be met, right? Like, or even be aware that they're not, then that's how you can start that process. Like another thing I would even challenge women to do is don't wait to feel like it. Don't wait to feel like it. Like mm-hmm. sometimes just getting in the throes will make you yeah. feel like it too. Any of you yeah, guys agree? I can, speak, I can speak to that one. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> well, it's just like taking action. You know, you might not want to go work out, but you know when you work out, mm-hmm. you feel better and you have more energy. So, mm-hmm. you know, you might just have to say, all right, girl, do that little self like, hoo, hoo. you know, <laughs> I know once we get going, there will be connection. Mm-hmm. Yes. I yeah. ex- go ahead. I was, I I had a coach, I had a coach coach that said sex starts in the morning because, Mm -hmm. and it's, and it's connection, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I decide in the morning that I'm going to have sex with my husband today, my mindset throughout the day is totally different. Like I'm paying attention to my needs. I'm paying attention to things I need to do. It's just like this meeting was coming up. What was the things I needed to do throughout the day to make sure that I was ready for, for this call? Like we need to, you know, stop taking like, oh, it's just going to happen, right? Like (laughs) be intentional about your sex life, make that decision, right? And start preparing yourself mentally and logistically, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. a good one too, because it makes your attitude different towards your husband too, right? If you're not going to like, if you're planning for that, you're going to kind of be more loving and more open and not like complaining or... Yeah, I I like that too. That's good, Katie. On the flip side, I think expectations can be hard when it's, when you feel like it's expected from your husband or your spouse or whatever, like at the end of a date night, you feel like, oh, it's coming up to this. Like he's going to expect this from me. Um, And I think that can really wreck your mind if you're caught up in your thoughts and you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, so I think we have to work on also feeling safe with our spouses. Like whenever we ask for a massage, it's not going to lead to something or, you know, I think that shuts us down a lot of the time. And so having those conversations of like, Hey, like when I feel like these expectations are on me or like, I need to perform on these certain times that makes me shut down. Um, Mm -hmm. and like, I don't want to shut down because I want us to enjoy those times. And so having that conversation and saying, I need to feel safe in these instances and, and, and Hey, like, and then having him practice that, like giving you a massage without expectations, having a date night without expectations. And then it becomes more like less of a burden or weight or worry for some of us who like, you're just so tightly wound because you're, you know, that this is coming and it's going to be expected of you. And, you know, Um, I think that can be something that women struggle with too. Yeah, totally. I love that. I just, I love that we're having this conversation because it's so common. And I think Mm -hmm. a lot of times we feel like, gosh, this is just me, or this is just me and my husband, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think, Ashley, I think I heard that on your podcast Mm -hmm. with, um, what is her name again? Oh, Jana Denton house. Yeah. That whole, um, feeling safe, like that clarifying of, um, 
like, not that your husband is like unsafe like right, in, yeah. in what you think of, but just that mm-hmm. expectation. Mm-hmm. And I really think that everything that we're talking about really comes down to communication and expectation and knowing yourself mm-hmm. and, and allowing yourself to be seen and known by your husband and, and vice versa, like getting to know mm-hmm. what he's desiring or, um, I was going to share, so we have a, a higher needs kid and there was a season where we literally were never alone because he couldn't be alone. He just, um, if it was alone, it was very short, like mm-hmm. 30 minutes. And at that time I had a coach and, um, everything in me was like, so irritated of like, I just want to be alone. <laughs> I just want to be with my husband. And, um, like we slept, like he slept in our room. And, um, so we never had time alone. And so we were on the spiral of like, I guess this is just how it's going to be. We're never going to be alone. And, um, so we were complaining that we had like zero sex life. (laughs) And then my coach was like, this sounds like an amazing opportunity for like, you got 20 minutes, let's go. And like, (laughs) But it totally shifted my whole mindset of like being really frustrated that I didn't have time alone Mm -hmm. with my husband to like, oh, now it's a game. Let's see, like, if we can go for it. Knock this out. (laughs) (laughs) But it totally was this like gift Mm -hmm. in the middle of a really hard season of parenting Mm -hmm. where it turned into a game. And um, yeah, anyway, so just throwing that out there for any other mom that you know, well, feeling like they're never alone or, or zapped. Yeah. It's just a shift in your mindset. Hmm. That brought up fun for me. I talk about this a lot because I think we forget as grown ups to have fun. Yeah. And I think this is a great opportunity, like you said, to take it from, you know, our, that, that focus of what's not working to like, what's our opportunity here. And let's, Mm -hmm. let's have a little fun with it. Cause then that creates more of the desire to find the fun versus Mm -hmm. just automatically throwing your hands up and going, ah, well, this is just how it's going to be till it's not this way anymore. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Cause 18 years is is too long to not. (laughs) (laughs) I, I say that jokingly, but it's, it is honestly, sad and shocking the amount of people who will just adapt that mindset of like oh well I am a mom and I'm just tired and this is just the way it is right and I don't come from a place of judgment like I battled with that myself like it's but I will like challenge everyone who is feeling that way because it's like in no way shape or form did we marry our spouse to have kids so that we can neglect our relationship, Mm -hmm. right? Like we have kids because the relationship and it's God, husband, kids, right? And this is in a healthy way. And Mm -hmm. so when we decide to be like, oh, like, you know, the kids just need me, the kids just need me. And we over inundate our schedules with running them all over the place. And we put them completely first to the neglect of our relationship with our husband. No wonder you don't want to have sex right? Like, and the best things we can give our kids is a great relationship with their dads, right? So it's just something that I would say, like, to just be very mindful of. And it doesn't have to be this massive shift, right? Like Michelle's talking about that, like, just start being intentional about that mindset. Like, where are you at right now? And what's one thing you could do to just take, take that shift into getting back to like, wanting to connect with him? you know, what does that Mm -hmm. look like? Yeah. I've heard somebody say like, you need to focus on, it was actually the man. And he was like, I need to focus on my queen. You know, like if I focus on the nest, which is my kids, like they leave. So it's just me and my queen left. Like, so if we aren't paying attention to, you know, our Kings or what, you know, vice versa, they're not paying attention to us. Like then when the nest leaves, we're just left with us. And if we haven't focused on us, then there ain't, there's nothing there. Right. Like, So I think that's super important. And, you know, and thinking about like, why, why would I want to settle on the, like, why should we want to settle in the first place? Like, this is your person, like for the rest of your life. And, and 
I am that tough love person that I, I even push it further and say, like, if you look down the road five, 10 years from now, like, it's not all about sex, but intimacy connection is a super important part of your relationship as a married couple. Like if you continue to neglect it, then like, where does that leave you? Like, yeah. you know, um, I, I mean, so when you look at it that way, I feel like that is a, a lot more eye opening. Um, and then also just like, sis, like why settle? Why? Like you have this one life, you have this one marriage, you have this one opportunity to live instead of just like existing. So live, right? Like enjoy each other, get up, you know, like work on yourself um, and embrace your body. Like, because he loves it. Like, why are we so caught up in all these things and all these lies in our head that are preventing us from having fun playing, right? Like, and being intimate with our spouses and just really thriving as a couple. Um, so yeah. yeah, I would just encourage anybody who's listening to think about those things as you're like taking baby steps into, you know, preparing this part of your relationship. Yeah. And it's all connected, just like you said. So like, even on the flip side of sex, right? Like the intimacy, the cuddling, the spending time together, the having fun the doing things like all of that's connected. So if one of them is off, like if it's not sex for you, if something else is off, like you need to have that conversation too, because it all, they all affect each other. Even just like when we were talking, if we were talking about sex specifically, it's like feeling good about yourself, going to the gym, right? Like all of those things, all these things in our lives are so interconnected and they all kind of have to be in, in balance. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, but it maybe is not like the sex piece for you, but it's like, you need to have the conversation with your husband. Like you guys have plenty of sex, but you need something else. You need like more intimacy, more date nights. Right. So I think that's important too. Yeah. Also when Ashley was saying, you know, what about five or 10 years from now, I, I, the image came up of, you know, when we're visualizing our perfect day, or let's say we're going into business or whatever, visualizing in the future about parts of our life. So who says this couldn't be a great visualization that we can sit and visualize. Okay. So what do I really want this to look like? And do that whole reverse engineering. So if I want this to be, whether you have an idea of, you know, so many times a week, whether it's date nights or actually the intimate connection, or maybe I do want to visualize, okay, well, I really want to go away every quarter because I know that that brings connection with me when I'm out of my home and I'm not looking at to do's and laundry, like to get that in your mind. So then you can back it up and go, okay, so what do I need to do? to create, whether it's the, the budget for that or the schedule commitment for that, and then make that something that we work towards. What do y'all think about that? So good. (laughs) good. Yes. Well, ladies, we got to wrap it up. Um, we didn't even like (laughs) scratch the surface on the questions. So, but we're going to have to have a a part part two. Yeah. Part two, part three. (laughs) We need, I feel like we need to have uh, the desire coach as guests maybe next time too. That would but, be awesome. And we miss, we miss Katie Lynn Hedrick. We missed, we missed her and uh, she is part of the group. I don't want to leave her out on the intro. She's just yeah. not here. So she's mm-hmm. also a podcast owner of the joyful life podcast. So um, ladies, thank you so much for joining. It's been awesome. And um, for the listeners, if you guys want any follow-up on this, if you guys feel bothered by anything we've said, mm-hmm. if you feel, oh, they will. <laughs> feel challenged by anything we said, we got DMs, so mm-hmm. I welcome them. <laughs> um, but most importantly, we're here to love on you guys. And so if you guys do need extra support or want something specific, right, like please reach out. Um, we are just here to serve you guys in any way we possibly can and love on you. So thank you guys again for watching. And we look forward to continuing this again soon.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you want to catch more Moms in the Middle talks, make sure that you join one of our Facebook groups because we go live in there weekly and we are hosting these talks live. So we alternate between groups. So each time is a different person's group. So you just got to catch us and see where we're going to be next. We always post and share. But if you enjoy this episode, if you found a nugget from it, I urge you to subscribe so you don't miss out because sometimes we have these talks and sometimes it's just me doing a solo episode, but I guarantee you're going to get some sort of beneficial nugget or inspiration or motivation if you listen in because that is my whole desire for you is to become um either inspired happy motivated um encouraged some something i want to give you something each and every day whether it's me or whether it's through this group of women and so if you found this helpful share it with a friend subscribe and i will catch you guys next time see ya